I want to greet you on behalf of Patriarch Johanna the 10th, who's in Boston this week. I think for the first time with our archdiocese since he has been um, our new patriarch. And he's there with uh, Metropolitan Joseph, who also sends his love. And that's where Father George is this morning. I was with them earlier this week. All the clergy and all the different organizations are together in Boston for their annual, biannual, every other year meetings, the National Convention. And I wanted to make sure that um, their greetings got to you. Um, please keep them in your prayers, especially Father George as he travels. And also, please keep in your prayers 100 of our chil children who left this morning for Antiochian Village for another session at uh, camp. They're traveling this morning and they'll be there for the next two weeks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The Gospel that we heard this morning is perhaps one of the most recognizable mystery stories that occur in the entire Bible. Jesus was known for his miracles and for 2,000 years he has been remembered by Christians and also by non-Christians as the man who healed the sick, who changed water into wine at Cana, who raised the dead, and who fed a multitude of people with only five loaves and with two fish. The story is easy to remember, and maybe that's why it's so well known. The Gospel says that Jesus was with a large group of people, and then when it was getting to be evening time, the disciples wanted to send the group back home so that they could get some food. But Jesus was unwilling to have them leave. Instead, Jesus told the disciples to feed the people themselves. To feed the people themselves. But the disciples said that they couldn't because all they could find was five loaves of bread and two little fish that a small boy had given to them. And they knew that this would not be enough to feed the crowd, which was, the Gospel says, over 5,000 people, because it says there were 5,000 men there, not including the women and the children, and some scholars say that could be up to maybe 20,000 people. So Jesus said, then bring the bread to me. And he took it, and the Gospel says that he looked up, the, up into the heavens and he blessed the food. He broke it and he gave it back to his disciples and told them to distribute this bread and this fish to the rest of the crowd. And it says that after everyone had eaten everything that they could so that they were all full, it says that there were still amazingly somehow Twelve baskets full of food left over. So that's the story of how Jesus Christ fed 5,000 people with only five loaves and two um, pieces of fish. But what people usually don't remember about this amazing story is what is said at the very beginning, the very first sentence of this Gospel pericope. And that's the sentence that I want to focus in on today. The very first sentence that we heard in this amazing story of how Christ fed those 5,000 people with only five loaves, it says this, At that time, when Jesus went ashore, He saw a great multitude of people, and He had compassion on them, and He healed their sick. It says in the very first sentence before he worked his miraculous ways and broke that bread, it says that he had compassion on the people that he saw who were there. And this is what I really want to focus in on. Not necessarily the miracle ex itself, because I think this virtue of compassion is so important, especially today. Jesus was a man of compassion. 
Jesus, our Lord and Savior, came to earth, was sent by his Father in heaven to remind us who we are as human beings. I say that a lot. We are people of compassion. This is why he told his disciples not to send those 5,000 people away, but to find food for them and feed all of them yourself so that they could show that they are people of compassion. And so compassion is the virtue that's really being addressed in this story. And as Christians, we're called to follow the example of Jesus Christ, the example that he left for us. And St. Paul, in one of his epistles, the epistles to the Ephesians, the church at Ephesus, says that we are to be imitators of Christ, as dear children imitate their parents. And he also says that we are called to walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. So if Christ is compassionate, then we are called as Christians to also be imitators of him and to also show compassion. And we need to demonstrate this compassion for others every single day if we can. In all that we say and in everything that we do as we lead our lives. But first we need to know what compassion is. And the definition of compassion may surprise you a little bit. Because the true dictionary understanding of compassion is defined as a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another person who is stricken by misfortune. And this is usually what we understand compassion to be. A feeling of sympathy for somebody who's suffering. But the definition goes on to say, but this feeling of compassion is also accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate that suffering. So in other words, compassion has to do with not only being aware of others that might be suffering around us, so in order to show compassion we have to see that others might need compassion. But we also need to recognize that they are indeed suffering so you have to find the people, you have to recognize that they are suffering, and then what's most important is that we need to be willing to reach out to them and to do something about it. Compassion requires not only recognition and not only being aware, but also requires action by each and every one of us in, in order for it to come to its fruition. So this definition is what Jesus was showing us in the Gospel lesson this morning. And this, this is what we're called as Christians to work on in our lives. We're called to be living icons of Christ's compassion to the world around us. St. Peter, and I, and I shared this with the, the children and with the parents who were here dropping them off um, before they went to camp today. Because St. Peter says something very, very, very important to us about how we are to act in this world. And in one of his letters in the Bible, he says that as Christians, we are to be people of one mind. We're supposed to have the same focus. We are supposed to be people who have compassion for one another. And who love each other as brothers and as sisters and who are tender-hearted towards one another, and who are courteous towards one another. And then St. Peter goes on to say what we're not supposed to be like. We're not supposed to be people who return evil for evil, or insult for insult. But St. Peter says, on the contrary, we are called to bless all those around us in this world knowing that by blessing them that God not only calls us to do that but that we may also inherit a blessing from God himself for choosing to bless those around us.
And if we're willing to be able to follow this example of Christ, of St. Paul and of St. Peter, then a true miracle in life will indeed take place in this world, I believe. We might not ever be able to feed 5,000 people or 10,000 or 20,000 or however many were fed that day with only five loaves of bread and with two fish, like Jesus did. But when people show compassion towards one another and take action to assist those who are in need and who are suffering, then there is a great bond that unites them together. Compassion and love unites people together. And that's what this world needs most today. We need people who are being united together and not people who are fighting to separate themselves for each, from each other. Because fighting only leads to destruction and we're seeing that all around the world today. But compassion leads to unity. And this is what we need more of. This is what the world needs to see, is you and me and all of us and all those created in God's image working hard to create unity and not to create destruction because Lord knows we have enough destruction in this world. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Gospel lesson this morning is reminding us to be people of compassion. People who are icons, living icons, of Christ's compassion to the world around us. People who find ways to reach out to others when they are sad. People who show concern for the well-being of their fellow man. People who help strangers when they see that they are in need. People who do not discriminate against others because of who they are and people who sacrifice to help the less fortunate and to offer their gifts to them and people who give aid to those who may be suffering because this is our calling as Christians dear brothers and sisters in Christ and if we are willing to work towards that end by showing love and compassion towards all those around us then God truly will show us a miracle, the miracle of unity and the miracle of peace in this world. This is our prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.